Okay, uh, good morning. Mr. Garcia, you have one due pass recommendation on AB 1533. 1533 is the uh, committee bill, it's a maintenance bill on California infrastructure. We have and a motion by Clerk, a second by Bonta. Thank Witnesses in support? Respectfully ask for a vote. <laughs> Individuals from the public in support? Witnesses opposition? Individuals from the public in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee members? Seeing none, would you like to close? Thank you so much. Thank bill you. is out on an A roll call. Mr. Gomez, SB 302. I'm, Mr. Chair, members, today I'm presenting SB 302. I heard a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Thank we have you. Have a motion so and a second. Thank you. It has for a due pass recommendation. <laughs> Do you have any witnesses in uh, support? Any in opposition? Any questions from members? Seeing none, I believe this is out on an A roll call. Thank you so much. Well. I thought he was going to want you to close, but I just wanted to see if you'd stop. <laughs> How did that feel? <laughs> yeah. It felt good. It felt good. I like it. Mr. Chow's here. Mr. Chow, thank you so much. You're up. Mr. Chow, you have one bill on the file, AB 744, with the due pass recommendation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, building affordable housing for low-income families in California is uh, expensive and can face local regulatory obstacles. Local on-site parking requirements can significantly increase the cost of a housing development. Many local governments apply minimum parking. Move the bill. Thank you very much. We uh, have a motion by Quirk, a second by Wood. Please proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I, uh, I have been working with the opponents, and we are still negotiating some amendments. Uh, my plan is to move the bill forward and amend the, the bill on the floor. Uh, the cost of this bill to local government is minor. The cost savings for an affordable housing development would be significant and would, would result in more affordable units being built. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to my uh, witness. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Mia Kong uh, with Domus Development. I'm an affordable housing developer. I've been building affordable housing in the state of California for over 20 years. Uh, minimum parking requirements uh, uh, force developers to build a lot of parking. Many of it goes unused. There was a study done by Transform uh, just this year showcasing Bay Area properties, about 46 of which uh, almost 2,000 parking spaces sat unused. The cost of those parking spaces that are used by no one cost these developments over $100 million. Uh, we put in minimum parking requirements because many times it's a NIMBY action, uh, even though our residents do not drive or they're near transit. So we are spending millions and millions of dollars on unused parking spaces throughout California. It's a very difficult thing to change. This bill will allow uh, affordable housing developers to build housing for people and not cars, and it costs the state zero dollars and will absolutely reduce GHG and allow us to move forward with 375 and SCSs and allow us to build more housing for the people people that are Californians rather than their cars. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support? Witnesses not individuals from the public? You can use the back mic. Sorry. Going too fast. Please. Opposition. Jonathan Clay on behalf of the city of Encinitas, we're opposed uh, mainly on the policy grounds of the bill. We feel that this should be best left to the locals to make these decisions. We also disagree with the language in the bill regarding uh, base density and rounding up. The city of Encinitas feels that they should, that existing law gives them the ability to also round down on that base density. With that, thank you. Thank you so much. Any other individuals in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee members? Mr. Quirk? Um, just to say I like the bill the way it is. Um, please don't make too many concessions. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chow, this is an interesting bill to me uh, based on, uh, you know, I should be conflicted on this, but I'm actually, um, I, I have some questions and I'm going to be interested in the, the uh, amendments that you take on the floor. So I think for today I'm going to abstain. Um, the uh, and the concern for me is, you know, as a city council member, 
and my experience of eight years sitting on the city council, I recognize that a lot of these city councils just adopt the universal building code mm -hmm. based on recommendations from their staff without really considering each individual project mm -hmm. and giving them the scrutiny that I think they should. Right. Also, based on my experience as a commercial real estate uh, agent in trying to place specialized properties uh, in different locations, recognizing that they have different parking requirements than what the Universal Building Code recognizes. Um, I, I might be able to support this bill when it gets to the floor, but uh, you know, this is the this is in a policy committee, and I, I don't sit on the two policy committees that it went through. But if the proponents of the bill uh, you would like to present me with some information before it goes to the floor, uh, I might be able to support it on the floor. But I'm going to abstain for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Any other questions or comments from the committee members? Mr. Chow, would you like to close? Absolutely. Uh, just uh, one brief comment and to address Mr. Jones' concern. One of the uh, amendments that we'll be considering is to allow cities to, uh, uh, to use uh, parking studies uh, from, from, previously, uh, from previous years to uh, conduct that negotiation process. So we'll be uh, presenting that on the floor. Thank you very much. With that, uh, respectfully ask for our vote. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad to hear you will be working with the opposition. Mr. Jones wants as many opponents and proponents of this bill to come to his office and lobby him. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate the, the, the openness. This bill is out on a B-roll call with Jones not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Ms. Garcia. Ms. Garcia will be uh, presenting for Ms. Campos. Ms. Campos has one bill on suspense and one due pass recommendation. How would you like to proceed, Ms. Garcia? E-375. Thank you so much. Please uh, continue. AB 375 is a bill that seeks to help address teacher recruitment and retention issues by expanding Move paid parental leave. Second. Since teachers do not have access to the state disability program, they are limited to six or eight weeks of paid paternal leave. To address this problem, this bill would allow teachers to use their existing differential pay program to extend their parental leave. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Witnesses in support? President of the San Jose Teachers Association. I think it's um, a really important that we support this bill and make sure that, that families who are either um, becoming new parents through birth, adoption, or foster care be given the due time that they need through using their own sick leave or differential pay at minimum or no additional cost to our district to ensure we have healthy family policies in California. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses of support? Individuals from the public in support? Witnesses in opposition? Individuals from the public in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee members? See, seeing none, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you so much. We have a motion from Eggman, a second by Quirk. This bill is out on a B-roll call with Chang not voting. Thanks. <laughs> so we need some authors in the Assembly Appropriations Committee. We have Thurman, Steinnorth, Burke. Stein North. <laughs> Stein North, you have uh, one bill on consent, one due pass recommendation. What's your pleasure? I would like to start with 976, please. I would like to thank the chair and to the members. 976 is a tax deduction credit for any person. We have a motion by uh, Bigelow, a second by Calderon. Uh, witnesses right. in support? Good afternoon. Or good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, Kevin O'Neill with the ASPCA in support. Sylvia Solis, Shaw, on behalf of the State Humane Association of California in support. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Any other individuals from the public in support? Witnesses in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee members? No. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Steinorth, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you so much. This bill is out on nay roll call with Mr. Gordon not voting. Thank you. And Quirk not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Burke, you're up. Ms. 
Ms. Burke, you have one bill on suspense, one due pass recommendation, AB 1361. What's your pleasure? I will waive presentation on AB 805. Please continue. All right. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, I would like to start off by thanking the chair and the committee staff for working with my office on this important issue. Assembly Bill 1361 provides current and former members of armed services greater access to higher okay. education. We have a motion by Bigelow, a second by Quirk. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Witnesses in support? My name is Brandon Biggert. I'm with the California Student Aid Commission. Uh, we work closely with the author's office and we support this bill very much. Thank you so much. Any other individuals from the public in support? Janet Lopez representing the University of Southern California. We have a growing number of veterans enrolling at our school right now and in strong support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thomas Vu with the Association of Independent California Colleges and Universities in support. Thank you. Raul Rambla, California Community Colleges, in support. Thank you. Jillian Skeen with the Community College League of California, representing California's 72 community college districts, in support. Thank you so much. Witnesses in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition, questions or comments from the committee members? Seeing none, Ms. Burke, would you like to close? AB 1361 will remove barriers and ensure that veterans have access to financial aid and are able to pursue the ed their education goals. I respectfully ask for your I vote. That was a rhetorical question, but thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion by Bigelow, a second by Quirk. This bill's out on a day roll call. Thank, thank you so much, Ms. Burke. <laughs> Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper, you have a suspense candidate, but we appreciate you coming and presenting. It's AB 480, it's on suspense. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm here today to present AB 480, which would require FICMAC, uh, the F Fiscal Crisis and Management Assistance Team, to conduct a study for the benefits of unifying California school districts. Beginning in the 1950s, the state encouraged school districts to unify so that the elementary school districts and high school districts in the region would be operated by the same school district. Such unification can decrease costs by consolidating school supplies, vehicle maintenance, and some staff positions. It can also protect students from being displaced in the event that a school is forced to close. Studying the impacts of unifying California school districts would allow us uh, to know for sure if school unification would be beneficial for each particular district. This study would be used as a tool when Californians across the state are uh, determining whether or not to unify their separated high school and elementary school districts. This bill received unanimous support from the Education Committee and I respectfully ask for your I vote, especially as a former 12-year member of a high school district myself. Thank you so much. Witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support, witnesses in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition. Questions or comments from the committee members? Seeing none, Mr. Harper, would you like to close? This bill is on suspense and will be taken up within a 48 hours, 24 hours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Studying the impacts of unification will help us determine the ways to improve our local schools within here in California. I'll respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you so much. This bill is on suspense, but we greatly appreciate you coming by. Come again. They should have put you on stage last night. <laughs> Mr. Allen, you're up. You have AB 679, due pass recommendation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, I'm here today to present AB 679. This is a simple bill that was brought to me by a constituent who highlighted a problem that they encountered when trying to officially record documents regarding a property with the county. Move, Move the bill. Thank you very much. Uh, in my constituent's case, uh, this is very simple. There was a page containing necessary information outlining the specifics of their property that was left out of the document. Once error was realized, it cost my constituent about $5,000. Uh, it was very time consuming and uh, this bill would very simply require an accurate page number recordation to be affixed to the front of any documents being submitted to the county recorder. Bill's a very simple idea to protect all of our constituents and I respectfully ask for your right vote. Thank you, Mr. Allen. You have a motion by Calderon, a second by Quirk. Any witnesses in support? 
Mr. Chair, members, Rob Grossclauser with the County Recorders Association. We currently have no position on the bill, but it is a work in progress. We look forward to working with the author's office. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other individuals in support? When this is in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition, questions or comments from the committee members? Mr. Bigelow. Mr. Allen, could you uh, maybe in some detail explain what the work in progress means to us as it was presented to you just now? Uh, I think, uh, Ryan, if you'd like to help out. Uh, what we're basically trying to do is make sure that we have the language in place to, to make sure this is doing exactly what we want it to do. It's really simple. We just want to have uh, a sticker with a page number affixed so people can tell exactly what pages uh, they're trying to reference within the document. And we're working with the county recorders to make sure that we have the exact language so we get the intended effect. Thank you, Mr. Allen, um, for giving us that uh, that close, and we definitely appreciate that. You know, every Republican bill is a work in progress, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this this bill's out on an A roll call. <laughs> Gordon not voting. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Mr. Chair, is the, there's, is the roast continuing? Because otherwise, because that, that would make me in trouble real soon. You have one bill, AB3, do pass recommendation. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, AB3 is a district bill. It establishes a community services district so that the people of Isla Vista may be able to levy themselves for revenue to increase public safety. Second. Um, we have a motion by Calderon, a second by Community Clerk. services. Please continue. Uh, this arose out of the high-profile high tragic uh, shooting last last year, um, sexual assaults, and uh, a riot. Um, and uh, a local government is needed for the unique needs of this community. Ask for your eye vote. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support, witnesses in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition. Questions or comments from the committee members? Question, Question by Mr. Bigelow. Recognizing CSDs are usually handled through the local LAFCO process, which is an arm of the state of California now. It's not just held locally. Why do you not want to let the local community go through that formal process, have the local formal hearings so that the community brings itself together? Because the a couple reasons. Uh, number one is the urgency of the situation. Um, the uh, lack of public safety services uh, per capita in that community. Um, is obviously uh, impacting public safety right now. Uh, the second, and LAFCO applications, as you probably know, can take several years to unfold. Secondly, statutorily, uh, LAFCOs can only form CSDs that are five members directly elected uh, and can only levy property taxes. Property tax in this community uh, is very divisive because of the high proportion of renters. And so an electorate made up exclusively of renter, or not exclusively, but vast majority of which are renters, would be able to levy property taxes on the minority of homeowners. And that has uh, wounded local government's efforts in the past. We did not want to go into property taxes. Um, and because five members directly elected, uh, when many of the community members only live in a communi that community for four to five years means a large turnover. And so the uh, flexibility of having an appointed official from the county and an, appointed, uh, an appointment from uh, the university will be able to round out the board and provide uh, a greater longevity of board members. Okay, so the, the real answer is it's being able to pick and choose who's going to be the board on the CSD. But that gets me to the next question. Typically, CSDs aren't allowed to fund police or fire protection services. That's done separately uh, through another mechanism, through a community facilities district or such. Um, I, I'm just kind of perplexed if you're wanting to do the safety aspect of it. Is this the proper vehicle for you to move forward and accomplish what you want to do in your community? Well, I, I believe that a uh, community services district um, is basically there would be two options for increased public safety services in this community. One would be cityhood, um, which it is not fiscally um, argued by the local LAFCO, among others. It is not in fiscal shape to have uh, a full-service city budget. Um, 
precisely because the city of Goleta, the adjacent city of Goleta, took all the sales tax generating commercial districts when it incorporated. Um, so, you know, the answer is complex. It also has to do with uh, LAFCO has had three opportunities to provide local governance for Isla Vista. They have not taken it. on one, they denied it. On one, they took no action. And on the third, they incorporated the city of Goleta to include all of the sales tax generating areas that Isla Vistans shop. Um, so uh, it is after 45 years of lack of action from LAFCO, it might be time for the state to say, well, maybe we need to step in and make sure it happens. Mr. Williams, I, I appreciate that because you've helped me a, a great deal. I still quite ca can't get there just because my, my longevity in history in local government has put me in a position where I've seen and gone through what you're going through, and I appreciate everything you're doing here, trying to find a solution. And, and I understand the revenue neutrality issue and discussion on cityhood and what, how that would work. I just don't think this is the course that's going to get you to the end result at the end of the day that the community desperately needs. Um, but having said that, you, you've given more insight into why you're doing this, and I understand that, and I wish you well, but I just can't quite get there today with you. Appreciate the but question. But thank you so much, uh, Mr. Williams, for explaining that. Thank you so much, Mr. Bigelow. Mr. Quirk. 45 years is too long to wait. Thank you, Mr. Quirk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Gallagher. No. No, no thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from the committee members? Um, Mr. Williams, I, I have a similar, I have a situation in my district that actually is unincorporated East Los Angeles who's been uh, unincorporated for a long time and it's always been nibbled away at the edges by the surrounding cities. It's, um, I'm in firm belief of um, trying to get as much local input in the unincorporated areas as, as possible. I've, I've worked for county supervisors that represented uh, unincorporated areas and trying to figure that out is always complex um, but I think that we need to keep the conversation going because um, I do believe that government does work better when it's closer to the to the uh, people and the voters that are representing and the and the smaller the group of people within the bar broader district their voices tend to be um, overwhelmed by the vast majority of, of the population and unincorporated East LA it's 138,000 within the county's uh, uh, supervisor's district of two million. They are never going to influence that supervisor to change, right? So unless they have some more local control. Um, so I, I, I definitely feel for what you're trying to accomplish in, um, in your district. This bill has a motion by Calderon and a second by Quirk. It's out on a B roll call. I'm going to go aye. Thank you. And Gall uh, Gallagher is an aye. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to uh, clarify um, to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, this is, it's not their bills that are a work in progress. It's always uh, Travis Allen's bills that are a work in progress. So <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> Mr. Quirk, on behalf of Senator Hernandez, Assemblymember Hernandez, Mr. So, Mr. Quirk, it's uh, Assemblymember Hernandez enjoys a due pass recommendation on AB 253. Please continue. This bill has three provisions, three We have major a motion provisions. by Calderon, a second by Wood. It requires, uh, the most important one is, is probably that uh, the department administrating the Veterans Housing and Homeless Prevention Bond Act of 2014 um, has uh, to give a preference to applicants for supportive housing projects who can demonstrate a multi-year commitment of Mental Health Services Act funding for the applicant's housing project funding plan. So um, I'll apparently have an expert here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your expert, please. Hi, Rebecca Gonzalez, National Association of Social Workers, California Chapter. We're in strong support of this bill. Veterans' um, mental health needs are um, have been ignored too long, and we need to put more funding there. And a position on the Mental Health Services Board would be helpful. Thank you. Great. Any other witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support? 
Maggie Merritt with the Steinberg Institute. We're in very strong support. Thank you so much. Any witnesses in opposition, individuals in op uh, from the public in opposition, questions or comments from the committee members? Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, I think I'm the only no vote on this one. And, and my concern here is um, giving preference uh, to projects that are also utilizing Prop 63 dollars. Um, certainly mental health is a component of what we, what we need to do in, in providing services to our veterans. But I'm concerned about giving that a preference over other projects. Ultimately this bomb was passed to, for housing uh, uh, for veterans. And uh, you know, giving a leg up just on to one subset of projects. You know, there could be other projects that deal with um, you know, um, other issues with regard to veterans, but are also involved in the in the housing component. Um, I don't know that we should necessarily shortchange those projects just because they're not utilizing Prop 63 funds or have a mental health focus. Yeah, I believe Mr. Hernandez, if he were here, would say that uh, this by being able to use these mental health funds, you have more money going to veteran housing. I think that's uh, a primary uh, goal of this program. Thank you so much for that answer. Any other questions or comments from committee members? Seeing none, we have a motion by Calderon, a second by Wood. This bill is out on an A roll call with Gallagher not voting no. Mr. Thurman, you're up. You have a Mr. Thurman, you have two bills. You have AB 768, which is uh, due pass with amendments to clarify law will not override collective bargaining agreements, but will allow voluntary compliance. And AB 1260 with the due pass recommendation. What's your pleasure? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'd like to start with uh, AB 768. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, it's a pleasure to be before you presenting AB 768. Um, what this bill would do is it would essentially ban the use of smokeless tobacco, what we call chewing tobacco, in the five major league stadiums in Move California. Move the bill. Second. We have a motion and a second, but please continue, Mr. Thurman. Thank you. Uh, as you know, last year we lost a giant in baseball. Tony Gwynn lost his battle to celebrate gland cancer. Other players are currently dealing with long-term oral cancer that they've attributed to the use of chewing tobacco. 500,000 kids every year try chewing tobacco for the first time. Uh, our, ban our bill would simply say that we care about kids and that all the places where players could be in the presence of kids, that they should not use chewing tobacco. In the dugouts, places where kids could be present and see their heroes using chewing tobacco. We're working very closely with the Players Association to also continue to get their investment in this issue. We know it's complicated, but we think that the success of this type of a ban hinges on having support from the actual users, and that's the players. Uh, so we move this forward. We're willing to work with the committee in their proposed amendments. We are hopeful to be able to uh, support uh, those amendments in a way where um, should the players work with us, and we're inviting them to come and meet with us, we're meeting with them, uh, that we'd have support on investment from the players. I'd respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you so much. Your witness and support? Here we go. I'm Dr. Donald Lyman. I, I am here to represent California Medical Association and the California Academy of Preventive Medicine. Uh, until I recently retired, I was in charge of the tobacco control program for the state for about 30 years. Quite successful. We have reduced uh, the cancer rate for lung cancer by about 30 percent with the associated costs. Uh, good stuff. We're in support of this. The issue is tobacco, a different kind of tobacco. This is chewing tobacco and children. We know that the way you get into children's heads is through adults. They've got to model themselves to help the children develop attitudes and behaviors. That's what this addresses. It protects primarily the children, but also the adults who use the smokeless tobacco. Uh, we're in support of this legislation. We've not, as, as it is in print, uh, we look forward to working with the author on the amendments he's just uh, uh, suggested. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support. Sylvia Solis, on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco and the office of Mayor Ed Lee in strong support. 
Thank you so much. So why it's team on behalf of Health Access California in support. Thank you. Any other individuals in support? Witnesses in opposition. Individuals from the public in opposition? Seeing none, questions or comments from the committee members? Seeing none, Mr. Thurman, would you like to close? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill has negligible financial impact on the general fund. I respectfully ask for your I vote in support of kids not seeing their players using chewing tobacco. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a, a motion by Quirk, a second by Wood. This bill is out on a B-roll call with Gallagher not voting. Ga Gallagher voting, not voting. Yeah, it's due pass with amendments. Mr. Thurman, your next bill. Thank you. On AB 768, uh, the next bill is AB 1260. Um, this is a bill about the city of Richmond um, in an area in the city of Richmond that was a former brownfield, uh, an area that has a lot of environmental hazards that is in the south shoreline of the city of Richmond and has now been identified as an area that will be rebuilt and redeveloped. This area will have a number of developments, shops and housing, waterfront related development, and will have a very important addition. UC Berkeley would like to launch a new campus there, the Global Campus Bay at Richmond, for research purposes for biotech and for uh, life sciences. Uh, this bill would create a JPA framework for the city of Richmond and UC Berkeley to participate in an enhanced finance district and other financial incentives to help build the infrastructure Move the bill. for this development. We have a motion by Quirk and a second by Wood. Uh, needless to say, this development would have significant positive benefit for the city of Richmond, for the people who live there, tremendous benefits uh, around life science for uh, businesses in the biotech sector, the life sciences sector, but overall for the, for the city reclaiming what was once a brownfield and an area that will now be safely developed for the benefit of the 100,000 people who live there. Uh, we do have a witness here today, the city manager from the city of Richmond, Mr. Bill Lindsay, and I would respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you so much, your witness. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Bill Lindsay, City Manager for the City of Richmond. And um, the City of Richmond is very much in support of this bill. Uh, it, uh, as indicated, it, it facilitates the partnership between the City of Richmond and University of California, Berkeley, but also it facilitates th uh, through the um, community benefits language a partnership with the broader community in terms of what this campus could be as part of the, the overall uh, development in underutilized and, um, and areas of the city that has a, uh, have uh, industrial legacy and brownfields. So the, uh, the financing district and UC Berkeley's participation in that would uh, help to ensure that, that uh, the project would move forward, that uh, everybody p pays their fair share of infrastructure costs, and that the community receives the benefits of that development in terms of, uh, in terms of economic development. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Individuals from the public in support? Witnesses in opposition? Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Jason Murphy, on behalf of the University of California, we are not in opposition. In fact, the university has uh, no position on this bill at this time. I want to uh, make a few comments today. I want to thank the author for his sincere efforts here to advantage uh, this, this potential project between the University of California and the City of Richmond. The University of California Berkeley is working closely with the city, um, and we look forward to continuing that work. I did want to note a few concerns regarding some of the language that um, was inserted into the bill. At the May 22nd amendments, they're, they're primarily policy related, but I uh, just wanted to note that I think we're uh, a bit uh, cart before the horse here in terms of some of these community benefit um, uh, ideas. Uh, the university is looking forward to paying its fair share, but we think it's a bit premature. Uh, we don't want to uh, slow this bill down at all. We're looking forward to continuing this conversation. And again, I want to thank the author for his work. Thank you so much. Any other individuals from the public in opposition? Questions or comments from the committee members? Seeing none, Mr. Thurman, would you like to close? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, I would simply just say this, that this bill has been very uh, intentional. Uh, the city of Richmond passed, the city council passed a resolution outlining what a community benefits agreement might look like. And it does have things in it like project labor agreements would be expected to support the development. Uh, that's been a practice in the city of Richmond, that development be done in a way where local people can work on the project. And, and in that respect, we've included that same type of language 
uh, in the bill. I want to thank the folks from UC Berkeley for having created a stakeholder process that will make recommendations uh, about what the community benefits agreement will ultimately look like, and we respect that process. We think that this bill in its language speaks to intent, and that whenever there's a development of this size and magnitude, we want to make sure that every single dollar that's spent, every public dollar for sure that is spent, has a lasting benefit for the local people here. And uh, we continue to work with UC Berkeley, the city of Richmond, and all of the stakeholders who are interested in this. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Thurman, and we uh, take you at your word that you'll continue working with the stakeholders to resolve any um, uh, outstanding issues when they, uh, it goes to the Senate, and even if it returns, we hopefully we see a finalized product. But this ha bill has the support of the committee. We have a motion by Quirk, a second by Wood. This bill is out on a B, Wood, uh, B roll call. Thank you. Ms. Irwin. Thank you for uh, coming. You have uh, AB 931. It's a due pass recommendation, not suspense. Please proceed. All right, Chair and members, AB 931 would increase the time frame for veterans separated from... Second. Act we have a motion by Bigelow, a second by Quirk. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Can I ask Anyone? for your I vote? Witnesses in support, individuals from the public in support, witnesses in opposition, individuals from the public in opposition, questions or comments from the committee members. Seeing none, this bill is out on an A roll call. Great, thank you very much. I need a motion on the consent calendar. Second. We have a motion by Bigelow, a second by Quirk. Yes, sir. This bill is out on an A roll call. We are. Committee is adjourned. <laughs>